Hey, welcome back to Tucson Tuesday. And I have the TS-357 here, which is has a very fundamental flaw, but almost everything about it is fantastic. So let's go ahead and get into it. The fundamental flaw that I end up having is with the pocket clip. I've just fully removed it. Um, and it's, uh, it's essentially what ends up happening uh, when you have micarta for handle scale um, that's very shallow and then one single attachment point to it it's it was a nice thought that uh, you can uh, f switch that from side to side but it basically took me um, all of uh, I don't know 10 or 15 minutes of uh, kind of hooking that uh, onto my pants pockets and then noticing that the pocket clip can um, do a little swirly like they're uh, playing around with beads like a go-go dancer from the 30s and 40s, <laughs> which is uh, just really unfortunate. Um, so in general, I just took the pocket clip off. Uh, I treat this one uh, kind of like I do with, uh, with an open-o where I can put this close to, you know, a, a particular work surface rather than carrying it on my person all the time. Because almost everything else about this is fantastic. Um, they're using this uh, really highly pressurized and um, high thread count micarta. Uh, essentially the same kind of stuff that they were using on uh, this funky little guy, the TS-312. It's now... They've used this uh, micarta on, I think, one or two others since, but I do like it quite a bit. It's, uh, like I said, very fine thread count on there. Much more actual linen micarta than uh, canvas micarta that uh, some people end up uh, calling linen micarta. Mm. So, uh, we essentially have a titanium subframe lock here. We have these, uh, these micarta onlays. We have this uh, giant flipper uh, stud disc, uh, whatever the hell you want to call that there. And uh, it has some crenellations going on there. And then we also have some further back. The ergonomics on it are quite nice. I do like how tall the blade is. The plunge grind's not all that bad. Uh, we can see that uh, I do have the startings of a smile here after I've uh, reprofiled it to uh, 17 degrees behind the edge. Uh, we do have um, a decent uh, amount of uh, lock bar um, uh, access there. It's uh, basically cut or scalloped in on one side. And uh, the other side um, is not scalloped out, uh, so that helps kind of grip that on there. The, um, the action on it's quite nice. Uh, so yeah, I really do like a lot of things about it. The blade shape, um, the, uh, the, the grind on it is uh, very, very nice and slicey. Uh, and it looks like the blade stock thickness might be a little bit thinner than um, they have on uh, quite a few others. How about if we figure that out? Yes, it is a uh, three millimeters, which is a uh, much more um, Civivi levels of uh, thick. So a little bit more slicey um, of uh, blade stock thickness. And of course their geometry is still kind of the same as they would with a uh, thicker blade stock. So it is really nice and thin and slicey. And this thing is uh, quite nice and lightweight. Uh, makes things quite nice. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, well, I don't know. It would be difficult to uh, find kind of like a, a pocket pouch for this thing because that blade uh, and the handle with the curve on it, it's uh, quite a bit taller, uh, you know, this way than uh, you would find from uh, most um, kind of uh, pocket pouches that are, I don't know, designed for Swiss Army knives or maybe a Letterman or something like that, which um, this guy is probably going to be a little bit uh, taller than, but uh, yeah. We can also uh, flick that guy out. It ends up working out all right. And reverse flicking because that uh, disc is uh, all sorts of proud. Ends up working out as well. Uh, the blade, even though it doesn't um, kind of flush up with the uh, the titanium uh, subframe all that much, still is kind of where it is. So you can choke up nice and close to that uh, edge if you want. And for whatever reason, this feels a little bit more secure to me than an overgrind finger troil that um, 
that uh, a whole bunch of uh, companies end up doing something like, I don't know, this guy from uh, Artisan Cutlery or whatever, where I feel like my finger, if I'm trying to do some cutting, could uh, move around a little bit and um, kiss the, uh, the heel of that blade. Well, yes, it's uh, it's using D2, just like uh, basically everything else um, that uh, Two Sun makes, you know, with very little exceptions. But uh, that's all right. And uh, the Micarta um, kind of has the as they've um, they've experienced with uh, some of their others using this uh, particular Micarta is um, you know kind of where they've uh, chamfered the edges. There, it does look a little bit ragged. Uh, that will end up going away as you end up using the knife, as uh, some of your finger oils will get in there and uh, slowly abrade that. But I suppose you could also hurry that up if you wanted to. And also a really nice, attractive uh, backspacer. Um, it sticks up proud of the uh, the uh, the titanium subframe just a little bit, but uh, that's good because it also has this um, kind of a curvy uh, triangle sort of... Um, pattern on there that uh, ends up feeling uh, super nice. You end up not getting a whole lot of it when you're using it in that uh, standard saber grip there, but uh, it is uh, super nice and comfortable if you actually have a use for using a uh, uh, reverse hammer grip or something like that. It's just kind of nice overall. And those uh, titanium subframes there are uh, basically just using their, uh, their standard tumbled titanium which is uh that's a good thing i do like that the uh the micarta meets up uh perfectly with those at the back there and we do have a little bit of a uh, lanyard piece there that might help if um you know you like me actually remove the pocket clip or let's face it you lose it because it got lost and just uh unscrewed or whatever um, then you could probably just uh, have this thing folded up in a particular pocket with a lanyard sticking out and uh, <laughs> use it that way so that you don't actually need um, to use the pocket clip on there. But uh, yeah, there we go with that. And um, the blade is uh, pretty well protected in there. I can't really get to it. And uh, uh, certainly a good portion of that, I think, is because it has a 3 millimeter blade stock thickness. If it was 3.8 to 4 um, it's much easier to get your, uh, your finger kind of in there or finger meat or something like that, depending on, um, how that, uh, ends up happening for you. But, uh, yeah, everything else about that, uh, about this knife is, uh, fantastic outside of, you know, the, the fact that, uh, the pocket clip is, um, is just not, not really implemented all that well. Uh, what they probably could have done if they really wanted to was fully drill out the, uh, the micarta there and actually, um, notch a little bit into that titanium subframe there. That would have perfectly, uh, changed that up and, uh, made this thing fantastic. Maybe they'll do it on an, uh, up or a V2 version of the model. That would be fantastic to see. Especially if they wanted to um, use something like um, their uh, their newer um, proprietary steel uh, that uh, YJ01 V1, which is uh, for the most part M390, but um, you know I, I got a whole video on it. There's a there's a little bit of differences and a difference in manufacturing for it, but um, yeah, it would be nice to uh, see them kind of improve that a little bit there by. Um, Actually making sure that the uh, the pocket clip was uh, anchored down into the uh, titanium rather than just the micarta there. But uh, as it is, I've been uh, kind of using this as a, a kitchen utility blade. Um, kind of kept it around my uh, my wet bar area, I guess. Which is what it was designed for. But, you know, I keep beverages as well as food because I got a freezer and stuff like that down here. I kind of treat it as my uh, kitchen if I don't want to really want to go upstairs or something like that to uh, warm up something. I don't have a microwave or anything down here, but I do have a fancy toaster oven air fryer thing. So yeah, it really depends on uh, what I want to do. But um, yeah, if I need to um, cut open a package um, or, uh, you know, if I have like uh, my bottles of uh, sparkling water because uh, I like the bubbles but don't really need the sugar that uh, something like... Um, 
Coke or Pepsi ends up giving to me, then, uh, you know, that's, uh, really good for doing that or taking care of, um, uh, cutting up anything larger that I need to, uh, cook or anything like that. This thing ends up working out really, really well for it. Really comfortable in that, uh, pinch grip. And, uh, that's really where that, um, kind of backspacer shines for really gripping on there. And, uh, you're, you're very, you're very secure in your grip. Uh, that's definitely what I'll end up saying on there. And the blade being a little bit taller, um, ends up working out quite well. Obviously you're not going to have, um, the same amount of uh, knuckle clearance as you would with a, a full chef's knife, but, uh, I'm not down here, you know, mincing up, um, shallots or anything like that. This is uh, a little bit more, uh, cut and dry or rugged kind of, uh, stuff that I end up doing with it but it ends up working out really, really well. So uh, I still really do like this knife, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really difficult to actually uh, carry it EDC wise because that pocket clip is just unreliable as all get out there. Um, and, uh, I've, and you know, this is definitely not Max Chachuk's, uh, first rodeo. Um, definitely not with Tucson either. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, this was kind of a, um, uh, miscommunication either on the, um, the schematics that he ended up sending over or whatever. Um, because he hasn't made really these, uh, this kind of a mistake on, uh, any of the other knives that he's done. Um, which includes the, uh, that gigantic button lock, the vandal that he did along with, uh, Lee from LTK or the, uh, five or six other knives that he's done for Tucson or heck even the, um, uh, the other, uh, the, the, the result with a Z that he also did with uh leaf from LTK. Uh, but that was, uh, produced by Wii knives, um, which, uh, I would have them right in front of me, but I didn't really think about it. Didn't really think to, uh, that I would mention them there, but, um, yeah. So I, as a designer, uh, Max certainly knows what he's doing. So I'm pretty sure this was mostly a, um, either a, uh, a, a design oversight or a communication error between him and, uh, Tucson, which, uh, I have seen, um, quite a bit. Uh, I've, I've seen some, uh, feedback from, uh, Mazwan Mokhtar, um, as well as, uh, Jelly Jerry on, um, things that they're like, really, they did that? How did they? All right, whatever. So, you know, it's, uh, it's like some communication errors and or, I don't know, them taking liberties that uh, maybe they shouldn't have taken. Uh, but like I said, I would really love to see this thing uh, kind of um, uh, have that uh, up or uh, V2 kind of uh, treatment there where they, uh, they fix the uh, the king on the, uh, the pocket clip there and possibly uh, change up that blade steel a little bit uh, just because I'd like to see that. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do a couple other measurements here. You got handle thickness of 0 0.59 almost. So, uh, fairly thick, almost 15 millimeters there. Uh, but very, very contoured. Uh, so it ends up being really nice and comfortable, especially for, uh, some kind of larger hands and stuff like that. And it ends up working out quite nice there. Uh, blade length on this guy. Let's see. At least at the time that I'm uh, doing this, I got basically 3.72 to 3.73 inches. That'll be, uh, 94.6 millimeters. So, um, still fairly long. The tip is uh, nicely protected there. It's not uh, kind of dangling out for you to uh, catch that on there. And this thing is quite nice and light. Uh, let's see. Let's grab my uh, my little AccuWeight drug scale or whatever else. I don't know. They'll probably say jeweler scale, but uh, whatever. 3.55 ounces um, or... 100.7 grams. So, yeah, it does hit under that ounce and inch mark, which is fairly difficult to do when you basically have a titanium sub frame lock here with a, uh, a longer than three and a half inch blade. So there's a lot to really love about this design, but, uh, man, yeah, like I said, 
just that pocket clip is uh is brutal it also doesn't have the uh, the call out pivot collar so you know that's uh a positive for a whole bunch of folks out there who uh, really don't like that uh yeah so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pop it open so we can take a look on the inside see what's going on in here Yep, they did uh, basically save a little bit of money um, by with these uh, micarta um, things being onlays rather than inlays. Possibly if it was designed uh, with them to be inlays like inside or inset into the titanium, it might have been a little bit easier for them at that point since they were already doing the milling work to uh, notch out that titanium. Might be interesting if I attempted to... Um, do a little bit of uh, a notch work on there and then find a, a spacer to be able to have that pocket clip sit a little bit further in there. I uh, don't necessarily know if I have the um, design and engineering skills to uh, get that done, but uh, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility of something happening. But uh, yeah, here we go. We can definitely see just how much uh, skeletonization is uh, going on on here to actually get it at that uh, under an ounce and inch mark. Not really a whole lot else to say about it. Uh, here's the uh, the blade stop pin on it. It will go all the way through uh, the titanium uh, on both sides there, but uh, yeah, that's perfectly all right because the micarta can stand up to uh, lateral forces like that if you're uh, flicking the knife out because uh, all the uh, the force from you flicking the knife out is uh, being absorbed by the titanium there so yeah put that bearing race on uh, a lot of times I will uh, put some uh, kind of uh, tacky lubrication or something like that on the underside there to uh, keep the um, bearing race from uh, moving a little bit um, which can make the action feel a little funky on some knives. Doesn't seem to uh, bother me on this one here. Let's go ahead and pop them back together. Super easy to do. Probably don't really want to um, accidentally over tighten these because, well, just like the uh, the pocket clip, my carta can end up having some problems there if the uh, the screws are allowed to travel further. Then, uh, yeah, you can end up uh, splitting or um, doing something bad to the my carta scales, as I've uh, accidentally seen on um, some knives that have bone that uh, don't have a pen construction but have screws and stuff like that. Same kind of uh, trouble you'd get in there. Uh, I did over tighten that pivot a little bit so the uh, the drop shuttiness isn't quite there, but that's something I can easily adjust off camera. I don't necessarily think everybody needs to uh, stick around and see that. So this knife, there's a whole lot of good going for it. Um, you can technically also front flip it. I guess I probably should have mentioned that uh, earlier. Uh, but they are very, very large crenellations, and it's really not something that um, at least I'm super able to uh, do kind of that reach around for. But, uh, yeah, there's a whole lot to love about it, especially that number, 357. Seems like it should be a fairly special knife. But, uh, yeah, it's unfortunately uh, ruined from that, uh, that pocket clip there. But, uh, you know, if they can fix that with a revision of it or something like that, uh, it would be absolutely fantastic and definitely a knife that uh, I could suggest to a lot of folks. It does kind of look like it has um, kind of, uh, you know, shadow box liners, if you will, because the, uh, the micarta doesn't fit all the way around. But uh, those titanium... Uh, Liners are actually a subframe, so they have a lot more flat space, so it doesn't feel like those titanium uh, liners are digging into you. It feels much more like a, a nice platform for them, so I don't know. Alrighty, uh, yeah, that basically does it for everything that I wanted to cover for it. So, uh, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.